Coach Lee, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about seven things that a narcissist cannot feel. Take a quick second and click the subscribe button below so that you can be notified when I have more videos like this. And that includes videos on relationships, breakups, marriage, life, and mindfulness. So less than 5% of the population is clinically narcissistic which means that less than 5% can actually be diagnosed with having narcissistic personality disorder. However, there are a lot of people, especially someone who would be a true narcissist, who would be able to fool some of the people that they're talking to, some of the testing or analysis that would be done. And so the number could be higher than that. But as I say in another video called is my ex a narcissist, which I will link to in the description below. If the person you're in a relationship with or want to be in a relationship with acts like a narcissist. In other words, if you have to wonder, if you have to ask the question, is this person a narcissist, then you don't need to be with them anyway. It doesn't matter if they can be diagnosed as having narcissistic personality disorder. If they're still acting that way, if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. It doesn't matter what you call it or if it's been diagnosed by a wizard of smart somewhere. So keep that in mind as I go through these seven things and see if you notice these things and people around you and if that might mean that you don't need to be in a relationship with them or you don't need to try to get them back. Number one on the list of seven things a narcissist cannot feel is empathy. Now, does that mean that every single narcissist has never, ever felt empathy? No, it doesn't. These are general things. Generally speaking, a narcissist will not feel empathy. So that means if you're in pain, the narcissist will be quick to forget that you are like, oh, you still have a headache 30 seconds later. Or if you say, my neck's really hurting. Could you just give me a, a neck massage for a minute? The narcissist, first of all, would act like it's such a huge chore to do and then finish quickly and kind of just say, there you go. But the concern would not be there for your pain. And that's a fundamental that you will notice with a narcissist is they look at pain with more of a curiosity, like an observer, whereas a normal person or an empath would almost feel that pain with you or with that other person. And when you're considering being in a relationship with someone, you want someone who can feel your pain along with you, who can experience it with you. It's not that you want them to hurt, but that's what love is. Love hurts when the other person hurts and you want to do what you can if there's anything you can do to help. A narcissist, on the other hand, it's more of an inconvenience. They wish you'd shut up about it so that they could get on with the evening, which is done to impress and entertain them in the first place. Number two on the list of what a narcissist cannot feel is loyalty. Loyalty. So it doesn't matter if you helped found this business, if you named it and put years of your life into it. We'll just drop you on a whim. If we get a new CEO or if we think that something different is on the horizon just don't want you a part of it. Or this person looks better in a suit or a dress. So I'll just go be with them and break up with you. Or in politics, maybe it's I'll betray an ally or the people because some special interest offered me more money. We know what loyalty is. A narcissist might know it in principle, but doesn't feel it. They don't feel a sense of it. It's not innate within them. And someone who doesn't have loyalty is definitely not someone you want to be in a relationship with. Number three, a narcissist doesn't feel guilt. And again, these are general principles. Sometimes a narcissist might feel a twinge of guilt or remembers a few years ago feeling guilt. But in general, a narcissist does not feel guilt. So they hurt your feelings. So you had to work late to clean up their mess, you drop their phone and crack the screen. If you're a narcissist, it's not going to keep you up at night. You're not going to feel that remorse and that guilt 
that you hurt someone or cause a problem for someone or damage someone's property or cost them something. If you're a narcissist, you might do what you have to do to get them to be quiet about it or to repay so that you don't get in legal trouble, but you don't feel guilt about it. You don't feel guilt when you've wronged someone. That means that person is a narcissist or at least has narcissistic tendencies. Number four, a narcissist does not feel humility. There's a fine line here between confidence and narcissism. A confident person will know his or her weaknesses, but still believes that they can win, they can do their best, they can succeed, they can find a way. That's great. A narcissist does not feel humility, as I mentioned in the previous point, when they should feel guilty and feel in a more humble position toward a person they've wronged. Or when someone has done a better job, a narcissist will almost be defiant about it instead of giving any kind of credit to them. A narcissist will almost refuse that he or she has been beaten or that someone else did something well. And because a narcissist is so unfamiliar with feeling humility, with feeling like someone else actually did something better than they did or deserves more credit, a narcissist will cheat to ensure that they get the praise, the victory, whatever you want to call it, because they will not admit that someone else actually did something better. Sometimes narcissists will learn how society functions and what people expect, and they might pretend to do some of these things. That's where it's tricky. That's why it's so difficult to just classify someone as a narcissist, because usually these people are intelligent and they can learn how to make things easy on themselves and how to get what they want. And sometimes that's not acting like a narcissist. So they don't always portray these things in obvious ways. Sometimes they act. Number five, a narcissist does not feel connection. You are there to serve her, to serve him. You are there to entertain, to plan great evenings, to show off, to make the narcissist feel wanted and lusted after and sexy and beautiful and handsome and all those things so that the narcissist can sit back and just feel your worship over their body, their brains, whatever it is. But there's not this mutual connection where both of you feel that the other is wonderful and that you have terrific conversations where you understand each other and you imagine together. And sometimes you reach similar conclusions and sometimes you reach different conclusions, but you understand why the other one came to that conclusion. And you feel this connection where you want to reach out and love this person. You want to walk beside this person. You want to have adventures with this person. You want to love this person and show them that you love them. A narcissist sees you as an accessory. A narcissist sees you as entertainment as a source of compliments. A narcissist does not feel a connection to you as a person. Number six, a narcissist does not feel protective impulses. In other words, if someone's being bullied, a narcissist does not feel this innate urge to go protect the person being bullied or to stick up for them, to say that's not right. A narcissist just kind of figures you're on your own, unless they think they can get a favor out of you by doing a favor for you. A narcissist might stand up to the playground bully if the playground bully is in front of him. But let that bully stand in front of someone else and the narcissist is nowhere to be seen. A narcissist wants you to take the fall, wants you to take the punch, wants you to take the bullet. Because after all, this is the narcissist's world. Your job is to keep revolving around them. Number seven, a narcissist does not have a sense of justice or fairness. In other words, if I buy you dinner, maybe sometime you buy me dinner. I pick you up, maybe next time you pick me up. I invite you to my home, maybe sometime you invite me to your home. Those are really basic things. In relationships, they're much more complex. Maybe I initiate sex, you initiate sex the next time. I reach for your hand, maybe 20 minutes later, you be the one to reach out and take my hand. People like to have interest shown in them. They like to feel the other person wants them as badly as they want the other person. 
And so in a relationship, a narcissist doesn't quite understand that. For the narcissist, it's all about them wanting you to demonstrate how much you want them constantly. But they don't really feel the need to do that back or to give that back to you. Because a narcissist doesn't see fairness. They don't see justice. They don't get it. Again, they learn because society makes you learn. We don't tend to like the people who are not fair or just. But as far as feeling it and doing it because they want to and because they have that feeling in their stomach that they should, it's not there. They might learn it mathematically like they did this, therefore they expect me at some point to do this. Some of them. But most narcissists just don't quite get it. If you are dating someone who's a narcissist or who you believe is a narcissist, it doesn't matter if they are a clinical narcissist or not. If they're treating you that way, if this is what you feel from them, I don't suggest you continue with them. I suggest you try to get away. If someone's broken up with you who's a narcissist, take a look at the video I'll link to in the description below called, Is My Ex a Narcissist? And I would say, don't try to get them back. Try to move on with your life. It will hurt. It will be difficult. But on the other side, you will be better off. If this video has been helpful to you, click the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I have more videos like this. Hit the like button if you thought this video was valuable. I also have a tip jar, which I will link to in the description below. And you can leave me a tip if you think this video brought some value to your life. If you have been broken up with, I will link to a page that provides information on my emergency breakup kit. And I also have an emergency marriage kit if you are separated or if your marriage is in danger of divorce. Take a look at those two in the description below. This has been Coach Lee, and as always, thank you for watching.